Hello, my name is Dario Resendez, Product Manager here at ICANN, and welcome to this edition of ICANN's Tech Corner. Being the product manager here at ICANN for monitors, I get really excited about new, uh, new display technology like 4K, HDR, and all that. So I'm really proud to introduce ICANN's OBM series of high-end 4K production monitors. Okay. These monitors here were uh, made in cooperation with a company named Postium uh, from South Korea. These guys really know their stuff when it comes to the science and the technology and everything that goes into making the best displays. So when we started working with them, we wanted uh, a 4K monitor that was really much uh, future-proof and filled with as many features as we could. So this is what we got. Now, these monitors here, the only thing that really is different, different between them is the size. So we have a 24-inch and a 17-inch. Now, the 24-inch features an Ultra HD uh, native resolution panel and a 17-inch uh, 1080p panel, okay? Uh, they're both 10-bit. They are very, very color accurate, very uniform, very beautiful panels. As you can see right now with the footage that's being played on them, uh, that was provided by our friends at Harmonic. Uh, this is live footage here. There's no superimposing or anything like that. Very, very beautiful pictures. Um, now, when it comes to uh, inputs, uh, we spared nothing. This features all the different uh, flavors of 4K. So we've got the 12G single link input. We also have the quad link square division input and the quad link uh, two sample interleave. Now, the difference between those two versions of quad link is the quad link square division is probably something you've already seen before where the image is split into four quadrants and each SDI input is one of those quadrants, okay? Uh, the two sample interleave is, you have the four inputs, but each one of them has 25% of the signal. So the difference is that in the square division version, if you lose one of the inputs, you lose a whole quadrant of your screen. Of your screen. Whereas with the two sample interleave, if you lose one of the inputs, you don't lose a lot of your image, the resolution just kind of drops a little bit. So for uh, mission critical situations and broadcasts and things like that, it's, it's better to have the, the two sample interleave because of that. So that's included in the monitor, as well as something that's kind of unique is the SFP optical module as well. So these monitors can take advantage of the new switchers that are coming out that support that kind of output. Now, it, they also support all your other standard resolutions, HD and all that as well. So very full featured, very future proof. Um, now, when it comes to the software features of these monitors, they're, they're full of features. They can apply or be beneficial for people in the film industry as well as people in broadcast. Now, for people in the film industry, there's a lot of color type features like being able to select the gamma as well as being able to select the different color spaces that you're working with. Uh, another added bonus of that is that it, we also allow uh, color space and gamma comparisons. So you can go in there, load two different gamma settings or two different color spaces and actually pan left and right and see the difference that those settings make on your image. Um, also, as well as being able to upload your own custom 3D LUTs, the monitor also comes included with a lot of log files for the different log formats as well, like S-log, C-log, all that uh, is already built into the monitor. These monitors also feature your standard type of uh, focus assist and, and zebra type features to help you shoot when you're live on location and things like that. So we, we, we fill them up with, with everything we can think of. Now, like I said earlier, these monitors are, are really nice, really high quality, um, very solidly built. Uh, they both run off of either AC or DC. So this, the small one, the 17 inch runs, can run off of uh, 12 volts and then the larger one off of 24 volts. So with the right battery power, you can power either one of these out in the field, which definitely comes in very handy. Um, now, I'd like to go into a little bit of uh, what goes on in the menu, just so you can you know, kind of get an idea of what's available on this monitor. Now, before I go into that, um, if you look at right below the, the monitor there, you can see it's got you know, knobs and buttons, everything really nicely uh, and ergonomically designed. So the knobs make it easy to make adjustments on the fly, also being able to navigate, navigate through the menu. Uh, the feature buttons that you see there have little LED lights. 
and as well as having uh, some function buttons that you can map your most used features to. Now, we know some people don't like the LED lights, so you can go into the menu, turn those off. Also, uh, people like to lock the buttons as well when you're in a very busy shoot or whatever. You don't want anybody messing with your settings and just lock those, set, those buttons and, and nothing will change unless you want it to. Now, going into the menu here, I can press the menu button. So the first, the first uh, window that comes up is the status window. Uh, this gives you a lot of information about the signal that you're feeding the monitor as well as any options you might have enabled. As you can see here, uh, you can tell that the footage is coming in through 12G SDI. Uh, the resolution 3840 by 2160 at 30p. You can see the color temperature I have it set at as well as my color space and gamma settings. If I move towards more information here in the status uh, window, you can see other things that I may have enabled or disabled as well as seeing the SDI payload ID, which gives you a lot of technical information about the signal that's coming in to this monitor. Uh, going to the next uh, menu option here is the uh, color temp, color space, and gamma options. So this is where you would actually go to set your color temperature, set your RGB settings, and things like that. So you can also see here, once I go to the second page of this menu, is I can uh, go to the color space option. Right now it's set to Rec. 709, as well as enabling or disabling the OBM HDR feature. So these monitors support HDR. That's very important. So for those guys that need to work with HDR, these monitors can handle that. Um, you can also, here's where you would select your gamma settings and your color space settings, as well as how you want your color space and gamma uh, comparisons to work. Uh, you can also, if you notice there, I have the gamma log setting highlighted. Right now it's set to user. Uh, if I go to the default uh, log selection window there, you can see that I have all the different log files that I can choose from uh, right there. So I'm going to back out of that. The next one is the zebra and focus. So here's where you would enable or disable your zebra or your focus assist. Going down further there, you have the user configuration menu. Here's where you set up your function buttons and any type of configuration for the monitor. You can select how long the menu stays up and then things like that. Uh, below that is the remote options here where you would set your, your remote settings for the monitor. So this has been kind of a quick rundown of the menu system. So these are ICANN's OBM series 4K monitors. We have a 24 inch and we have a 17 inch as well. If you like what you see, come visit us at ICANNCorp.com. My name is Daryl Resendez and this has been ICANN's Tech Corner. Thank you.